Well, in other news, it looks like the Ontario Tories want to topple Kathleen Wynne's minority Liberal government. You saw it here on Sun News. As Premier Wynne's throne speech was delivered by the Lieutenant Governor, a call on all parties to work together. And while the NDP's on board for now, it seems the PC party has its own agenda. Alex Gunn now live with details, and the PC party was calling for a dramatic shift, or they wouldn't be happy, and it seems that Premier Wynne has shifted to the left. Right, and that's true, Alex. We are seeing that the PC parties did say there was nothing really bold in the throne speech. And we know that the throne speech um, has been approved by NDP leader Andrea Horvath. She is supporting it. And what we saw from Kathleen Wynne ultimately is that she really is trying to distinguish herself from the Dalton McGuinty legacy by cooperating with the opposition parties and coming forward with collaborative s solutions. I want to talk about some of the central objectives that we did see in the throne speech. They were listed as fiscal responsibility economic growth and increased employment and she says she's hoping to send a message to Ontarians that their finances are in her steady hands and she says that this throne speech was basically used to include ideas that would appeal to both opposition parties so she says that she can you know make peace with both parties and that they can accept her terms my hope is that the uh, members of the opposition heard how closely I've been listening to their concerns and to the concerns of people across the province because we're all hearing the same things from people around the province. And so I hope that uh, they heard the echoes of that in the throne speech and that we'll be able to work together. And PC leader Tim Hudak said he is voting against the speech. He made that very clear just after the throne speech was presented. He said there is nothing bold in the throne speech and that Ontario does need some very substantial change to move forward, specifically in regard to Ontario's deficit, $12 billion. He says that's a major concern for Ontarians. And although Kathleen Wynne does intend to have some sort of fiscal restraint going forward, he says it's really unclear just exactly how she's going to do that. There wasn't any clear definition of how these changes would be implemented and he wasn't very happy with the throne speech. It's safe to say that he said that, well, he does not support Kathleen Wynne's throne speech. I'm for a different direction. I think Ontario's days um, can improve. Our best days lie ahead of us, but in order to get there, we need to change the team that's leading this problem. So we've got to strike out in a bold new direction. And NDP leader Andrea Horvath says she is supporting the throne speech. She says, however, there is an ultimatum attached to that. She wants to see particular things move forward once we get to that spring budget. If that's not what she likes to see come spring, she will be voting that budget down. So she was quite clear about the fact that this is uh, promising words coming from Kathleen Wynne. But like Tim Hudak said, there are no specifics just exactly how she's going to balance both demands from both opposition parties. It seems that Kathleen Wynne was trying to work with both opposition leaders, but at the same time, it seems that this uh, balancing act won't last for long. And of course, uh, Andrea Horvath did come forward to say that she will vote the throne speech in. Take a listen. Well, I think it's pretty clear that we're prepared to let this uh, this uh, throne speech uh, go by. We're prepared to uh, to let to pass it. Uh, but um, I have to tell the premier really loudly and clearly uh, that the people of this province are tired of talk. I'm tired of talk, I want some action and they need some action and we've set out some pretty achievable actionable items and we expect them in the budget. And Alex, the throne speech was really short on specifics. I think everyone agree, can, can agree to that fact that specifics weren't exactly clear and it's not exactly sure or certain at this point in time just how Kathleen Wynne will maintain these austerity measures going forward. So I think there was a lot of chatter happening in the weeks uh, leading up into the spring budget. People are really asking questions of just exactly how she's going to implement this. Yes, she mentioned the Drummond Report and fiscal restraint, but everyone's asking, is this all possible? Yeah, especially considering she did say that they would still continue to support the all-day kindergarten, which a right. lot of people simply say, we can't afford that. And it was, of course, top of the list of uh, mm -hmm. Don Drummond's report of things that would have to be cut. All right, we'll continue following this. Thanks, Alex. Thank you.